So I'm having a good time. I appreciate your hospitality. You know, we're we're talking we're talking politics, but we're talking real life here. Like we have someone that actually cares, and and, and I'm not his campaign manager yet. Wait, wait, <laughs> wait, wait. But I do want to know. You know, everybody. I want to know, and everybody wants to know. And, and I'm not afraid to ask it. Why? Why do you want to? Why were you running? What is your? What are you all about? Why are you doing this? It's funny too because when I first moved to Philadelphia. I said, everything I did in New York City, I didn't want to do anymore. I gave, I gave, I gave. I mean, I consider myself a professional volunteer. All the different organizations I was in. And I said, I just want time for myself. My, my uncle passed away. He left me, you know, some money to buy a house. It wasn't much in New York City, because 300000 doesn't buy you much in New York City. But since I used to go to boarding school out here, I kind of remember the area, and I love the fresh air in Philadelphia. I love the greenery. I love the parks and that suburban feel. So I said, I want to come here. And I said, when I came over here, I want to do two things. Two things I basically want to do. One was go fishing in the Schuylkill River. People said, I don't know if you want to do that because you may pull up a body or a car <laughs> and stuff like that. But go fishing more and also go dating. I, in New York City, you have to give up a lot of your personal life to you know run this treadmill going nowhere fast or to climb the ladder when I came here. <laughs> right. But I met the people there and I loved the people, but I saw certain things that, that could improve upon. I noticed the fact that there were these invisible segregation lines. And you know, history runs deep here. I understand back in the days, you know, you had two working class groups of people that had to fight really hard for whatever resources they were given. And a lot of times they weren't given the resources they needed, whether it's the Irish, whether it's the African Americans, whether it was some Italians, you know, the resources weren't there and they would dump certain groups of people into certain areas, not give these resources. And these areas usually had, uh, what do you call it, trash recycling plants over there. It wasn't the freshest areas like in New York City. It wasn't the most, safest in uh, clean air and, you know, areas, clean environment areas. And so you had a lot of fighting that took place and eventually as things developed and become more in tune with the 21st century, uh, things start to change but it still moved at a slow pace and I said I can use my skills that help me blend in all different demographics and my experience at Community Board 6 which wasn't, uh, I lived in Manhattan, mid Manhattan, which wasn't African American area, it was a diverse area. It had Irish, Jews, Asians, Latinos, uh, African Americans, and you know, uh, Eastern Europeans and stuff like that. So I said, let me come over here and see what I could do. And I figured out what people were looking for, what people needed. And when I joined the Friends of Lanier Park group, because they were fighting because the same thing. You know, it's like, can I stuff my people in this board? Can I stuff my people in this group? Everybody's doing the same thing. So I noticed too that as uh, someone who's not born here, that I had a certain advantage because anybody that moved here knew we would all speak to each other. Hey, how's it going? You new here? You sound different. You sound different. And then we would start, you know, having a good camaraderie and bonding together. If you have any problems, give me a call. You too. Because Philadelphia, at the time, and this is 2020 when I started living here, uh, it's kind of known as being a place that's very xenophobic. And xenophobic means fear foreigners. Anybody different, you know? Anybody that's from a different state, not different demographics, race, ethnicity, religion, mm -hmm. this and that, but no, if you're from New York, I mean, you see your stadium. Just, just not from Philly, right? Exactly, you see your football <laughs> games, I mean, you guys have people from other teams that come so, over to visit, you beat them up. So, you're the first stadium I know that has a jail underneath of it and stuff. The only thing we hold against you is you're not from Philly. <laughs> exactly, so you know, know. It. It's so true. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I said, how can I, you know, bring everybody together? And my campaign, when they asked me to please run, I said that'd be one of my, my four pillars of my campaign. One of them was bringing people together. And like I said, you know, we have more in common than we differ. Mm -hmm. It's just that a lot of times people didn't have as much exposure. A lot of people didn't travel to different places and get a chance to be around different ethnicities, nationalities, religions, and all that to understand that, you know, we all want to work. We all want to, uh, what do you call it, uh, to have pride in where we live. We all want a safe environment. And we want, want a feeling of being and a feeling of hope and, you know, opportunity. So you take those four things and you say, listen, how can we all come together and get rid of these invisible boundaries? And I had things like flea market days. I said that the school should take uh, public property that's not used on weekends, like the parking lots and stuff like that, and have flea market days where people come together, bring their stuff there. If you live in the area, you don't have to pay. If you're from outside, you're a vendor, you come here, you pay a certain amount of money, it just goes back to the community. So this way people get a chance to know their neighbors and also give it a junk they have during hard economic times and make extra money and stuff like that. 
Uh, we had, you know, I was really pushing for more <clears throat> uh, movie nights in the park. I said I work with park groups over there, have movie nights, have more events in the parks and stuff. I also was pushing for small businesses. I feel we don't have enough small business here, but the ones we do have here, like the little bodegas and mom and pa stores, that they should get tax breaks or get the license renewed for free if they take kids from the area and mentor them. Take some of the little kids here and mentor them because these kids, what a lot of things these not-for-profits have are these basketball leagues and these football leagues, but as I said during these park meetings to people who I know who had different uh, not-for-profits, it's easier to get hit by lightning twice than it is for someone to become a professional basketball player, professional football player, professional baseball player. Why not get a skill that's more, how should you say it, plausible, not possible. Anything's possible. I get the millions, I get the mega millions, right? You get the mega millions, but are we gonna hit the mega millions for a billion dollars? Right. More than likely not, right? But Maybe. we have, yeah, okay, <laughs> possible, but not plausible. Possible. <laughs> but the thing is, my thing was, uh, it's possible and more attainable to be a small business owner. And I said it'd be great to have some of these kids who fathers a lot of times aren't around, or if they were around, they all did the same work, you know, whether it's during hard times, they would, some of them had bad experiences. Parents would probably sell drugs in a bad time or got involved in vices and all that, and they pass it on to their children. And I'm like, no, you know, they need a fresh perspective. They need someone who could show them differently. I was telling uh, Tyreek from uh, Young Chances over here, he runs a great not for profit. And when he was on the board, I was trying to tell him, too, listen, your brand, expand your brand. You know, get out of the mold of just, I want to have a basketball league. This and that. Teach them chess. Have chess tournaments. Teach them uh, career days where they interact with the police and they ride around the police. I mean, you know, I had a good Irish friend over there that used to take kids and put them in the tow trucks. Black kids, too. And like, hey, come in the tow trucks. See how you could be a tow truck driver and make money doing this. You know, different things where you can have a chance of supporting yourself and have a head start at a younger age rather than get caught up in the streets. And I felt like, you know, supporting small businesses, having, we needed more small businesses here. I actually put in my platform, I thought we should have, you know, change variances in zoning for any street that goes through South Philly that has major bus lines. Like for instance, on 30th Street and 29th Street, I think you had the 47 bus, or 40, 42 bus, or 49 yeah. bus, one of those. I said, you should have zoning for those streets right there to, you know, encourage more businesses to come here and to give residents here who, I have to walk so far to go to laundromats because we don't have any right here. We just have way one here. But we'll have to go far to get a cleaners because cleaners, you have to go to Point Breeze or you have to go to uh, Oregon Avenue and stuff like that. Or we'll have to go far to a shoe place. We have to go, what is that? Uh, south of uh, Broad Street. I was like, you know, to have one store every five or 10 blocks here, it's not really good. You know, we need more stores. But if you change the zoning for those streets that actually bring traffic through you can put a revenue stream there that can support itself and also businesses bring people together and then allowing a variance there is the simplest version of that so um i want to ask and like how could we whoever may be watching or any interested of course monetarily but like how can we help besides sending money although we'll definitely take your money but <laughs> uh, like how can we help how can we support you how can we get involved how can we support the, 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 the cause, what, what would be, you know, maybe I'll talk a little bit about that. Okay, well, I'm not running for office this year. I mean, I had a good run last year. I made the ballot, got signatures I needed. Of course, there's a former city judge turned councilman, my former city councilman turned judge, to cash in favors, knock me at the ballot, which is why I did my <laughs> buck the system, buck the vote campaign, where <clears throat> after I got knocked at the ballot in um, <laughs> April, and licked my wounds and went into hiding because I was embarrassed, I was, I was depressed, I was whatever, but came election day uh, in November, I had a vision. God said, Aaron, reach out to your constituents. Let them know what happened. Don't let this go unavenged. Let people know that we have dirty politics here and it needs to be addressed. So I have a little protest. So I thought about it, spoke to some community org organizers, said, listen, can you give me some people to help out to pass flyers? I want to talk about my experience, let them know what's happening. Tell people that instead of not showing up to polls election days, which most of them didn't feel like doing, I mean, you only had 33% show up. 33% that showed up to this poll sites and stuff last election day. I said, take your frustration, go there, and put my name in a ballot. Vote for me. Make me a write-in candidate and let them know that we will not have dirty elections. We will not have unfair politics. You know, we want more clean politics in Philadelphia. We want more term limits for city council in Philadelphia. We want more, uh, we want the... The signatures needed from 750 to be 450 like they do in New York and bigger cities, you know, because 
it's kind of hard to get around here, especially winter time when the day hours are so short and you try knocking at someone's door at six o'clock at night when the sun's down. You know, mm -hmm. they may greet you with something that you don't want to be greeted with. I'm gonna put a link to this. We're gonna put we'll put a link to this below the video. Please like, subscribe, bell notification, hit us up. But I'm gonna put a link to but this you can, uh, PDF. You can, like I said, just check out some of the, we have some good organizations here. We have uh, Young Chances that take kids and try to take some of the things I put in my platform and expand their, you know, uh, horizons and show them different things. Resident Action Committee, they have a good uh, basketball league that they do in Salvation Army across the street. And they also do a football league in the park over there. You also have uh, uh, my friend, Mr. Chill, over there from Laney, uh, Stringer, Stringer Park. He does like a summer camp over there. So, you know, bring your kids over there and Salvation Army has a summer camp as well. Just come around here, explore. You know, we have every Wednesday is during the summertime from I think seven o'clock or no, six o'clock to eight o'clock, uh, seniors line dancing in the park over there. And it brings people together, it brings vendors together. We got vendors from outside that come there and the community comes together with some good music and the seniors get a chance to do their line dancing <laughs> and stuff, stay in shape and, you know, still feel as a part of the community. Young people there, families there, people from outside there. So we got a good little tourist area. Come there during the summertime as well and bring money over here, support the local businesses and the community there from vendors that, you know, have, uh, do like cooking and stuff like that and sell plates of food. You know, we got a lot of talented people here. We have a lot of people here that just, would like to be a bigger part of Philadelphia than just South Philly. That's great. I, um, I I can't say how much fun I had. I appreciate your time very much. You gave us a tour of your home. You talked to us. You you live in our city. We we're we're neighbors essentially. I mean, we're, we're, I feel like we're friends, and we're definitely uh, um, we have a professional relationship as well. Uh, if you want to support in any way, hit us up. You can call, email, text us anytime. We'll have the link. To uh, to Aaron's uh, the PDF here. We'll put his wet, or we'll put his uh, email address there too. Um, we want you to to know that we're here to help support you in any way. If you have a question or maybe you have a comment, I'm sure we're going to get some comments. I can't wait <laughs> to see some comments about this, but it'll be cool. And one last thing too, yeah, you please. also have a coffee shop that opened up a few years back. You know, a nice Trinity coffee shop called Great Fairies Coffee Shop. And when I saw that open up, I felt like, you know, I'm in Brooklyn, New York, where the artists come together in a hipster type of coffee shop that has the, the the, you know, how she said, the fancy types of coffees like Vietnamese coffee and, you know, the Chilean owner, he's from Chile, his name is uh, Naibs, good guy, and stuff, and summertime they put chairs on the outside, so you have that unenclosed sidewalk cafe type of thing, and those are the things that help bring areas and bring Philadelphia to the future, because my motto when I ran for city council last year was pushing Philly forward, because I feel Philadelphia, not just being the second biggest city now in the Northeast Atlantic Coast, and not just having, in 2021, more New Yorkers move to Philadelphia than Philadelphia's moved to New York first time in 35 years. Mm -hmm. But I said, you know, Philadelphia is on its way up. Hey, well, to support me, you go always check out my email address, Aaron, or A. Scott Humphrey at gmail.com. That's A, then middle initial S, C, O, T, T, H, U, M, P, H, R, E, Y, at gmail.com. Send me an email. We could like shoot a letter, talk about different things, and see what we could do to collab together. Or like I said, we got some great organizations here. You got Philly Thrive, you got Young Chances, you got Resident Action Committee, you have uh, Salvation Army over there, and you also have uh, Mr. Chill who runs a summer camp over at Stinger Park. So you have those right there. Like I said, hey, you know, even though sometimes they compete for resources, we're all together and it's, we're all one. Uh, just because you're anti-business doesn't mean you're anti-community. You're pro. Just because you're pro-community doesn't mean you're anti-business. Just because you're pro-business doesn't mean you're anti-community. So we got different people of different social hierarchies and different economic scales. But like I said, we're all neighbors and we're all trying to blend together. You got new people that moved to such as myself. You got people that's been here for a long time. But we're pushing forward. We're that's pushing great. Forward. Well, I want to thank you so much for allowing us the honor to. Yeah, talk with you and answer our questions and show us your home and talk about the community. Uh, I mean, we couldn't have said it better ourselves and I just want to thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank all of our watchers, listeners for supporting the channel. It, it really helps us out if you hit subscribe, you, you, you hit that bell notification. Any comment we'll take, good, bad, or indifferent, uh, but I want you to have a great day, everybody. Thanks a lot. And thank you for having me here. Pleasure being here. Thank you, sir. Gregory.